Hey there YouTube, once again, since I've got a wee bit of free time now, I didn't expect to have any today, I thought I'd be working all day, but it's just, uh, nothing's working today for some bizarre reason, nothing whatsoever, it's the vile weather, and I want the cold and the autumn and the rain and the frost back. Roll on the latter half of the year. Anyway, I've been wanting to do this for a while now, and I just haven't had time to do it. This is going to be my review of the uh, Transformers live-action movie, not the up-and-coming one, not Revenge of the Fallen, the original one. Um, and, you know, I when I first heard about this movie, and I heard about all of the elements that were going into it, I was determined to hate it. I know that it's fashionable to hate Michael Bay, but I hate him for legitimate reasons. I hate him because he's a shit director. His films are abysmal. He's an abysmal director. Most of the films he's directed up until this point not only have huge, glaring plot holes in what little plot there is, but there doesn't seem to be much in the films he creates bar explosions interlinked by little bits of character interaction that have rock soundtrack superimposed over them. That's basically a Michael Bay film. There's not much else to them. So when I heard that Michael Bay was directing Transformers, I thought, oh my god. Well, that's it. It's not going to be any good. And then other things started to filter through. The fact that um, certain elements of the core mythology had been changed. And I know, I know that it's inevitable. It's inevitably going to happen because you... You just cannot have a, a reproduction, a perfect reproduction of the 1980s core mythology. It would just be absurd. And I knew they were going to change certain elements, but... The more I heard, the more disgruntled I became about it as a, an avowed Transformer fanboy. So it was with a, a profound sense of reluctance that I went into the cinema. And you know... What first started endearing me to the movie is when I started to laugh, and it happened very quickly. And I was surprised by that. I was surprised that it was genuinely funny. And it really is. I, If anything, Transformers the live-action movie is a, a melding of summer blockbuster action adventure a la Pirates of the Caribbean with, I wouldn't even call it sci-fi, sci-fantasy elements and comedy a core of comedy it seems what they've done is acknowledged that it's the subject matter is patently absurd giant sentient transforming alien robots that crash land on earth it is, it's completely ludicrous and they've run with it they've run with that absurdity and tried not to shy away from it but to emphasise it and that is a wonderful thing they haven't taken anything too seriously there are big bombastic moments you know, there are confrontations between Optimus Prime and Megatron there are big bombastic speeches about how freedom is the right of all sentient beings and blah 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 blah. But even they, even they have a certain wryness underneath them. They're just like, they, they play them as homages to the fans of Transformers. Um, and this is another thing the movie does very well. It pays just enough homage to the original mythologies, to uh, the comics and the cartoons and the original toys to please established fans, but it also reinvents the mythology uh, and introduces some wonderful new elements to appeal to a wider demographic. And it's something the writers of this movie, who are the same people who wrote the Star Trek movie, seem to be able to do very, very well indeed. Now, this film, the, there is nothing profound in it whatsoever, and they haven't even attempted to do so. It's not even coherent. The plot is bollocks. There is no plot whatsoever. There are just a series of excuses for getting the Transformers on Earth and fighting. And that is fine, because that's all the movie it sets out to do. It doesn't set out to provide any profound commentary on the political status quo or on modern culture or on anything to that effect. It is a pure summer blockbuster. It's brainless, brash, hugely visual. And this is another element of the movie that is massively successful. The aesthetics of the movie are stunning. The Transformers look beautiful. The CGI is flawless. 
absolutely flawless. I generally tend to dislike uh, an overabundance of CG monsters and whatnot. But in this movie it works. And it works because so much time and effort has gone into making the Transformers real beings, real entities that have weight and that interact properly with the environment. And as I say, I cannot even be bothered to go into the plot because it's, there isn't one. It doesn't matter. The plot is completely irrelevant. The movie is a series of set pieces in which uh, consist of incredible and beautifully shot and choreographed action sequences interspersed with comedy. And most of the comedy comes from Sam Witwicky, who is played by Shia LaBeouf. Now, Shia, Shia is not my favourite actor in the world. In fact, I think whenever he does a serious role, he's bloody awful. But as Sam Witwicky, he's wonderful. He can deliver a one-liner very, very well. It's that, that po-faced, I-don't-quite-know-what-I'm-doing thing that he has going on. And he's very, very much the heart and soul of the movie. And then you have... Uh, loads of tertiary characters as well, all of whom are wonderful. I particularly liked John Turturro, whose name in the film escapes me at the moment. He's the, the head of Section 7, which is a secret government agency that deals with extraterrestrials, and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. John Turturro's performance is wonderful, as is John Voight's. They're both very, 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 very funny indeed. In fact, John, John Turturro, his character... He invests, it could have been very, very cliched indeed, but he invests it with this strange schizophrenic quality that makes him immediately endearing. Then, of course, you have the Transformers themselves, most of whom don't have much characterization. The only ones that have any real characterization, technically, are Bumblebee and Optimus Prime. Megatron gets a wee bit. Megatron does not occur in the film very much. He is just the omnipresent threat of the movie that's waiting to break loose, which he does at the end to great effect. I have to admit, I don't really understand why they bothered paying Hugo Weaving to play him, because he doesn't have many lines. Most of the lines he has are very good, but he doesn't have many. It seems a waste of time paying such a high caliber actor, but you know, he does a very, very um, passable performance. He seems to encapsulate everything that's right about Megatron. But I think the standout Transformer is inevitably going to be my least favourite, which is Optimus Prime, of course. Played by Peter Cullen, who played him in the original cartoon. There is no one else who can play Optimus Prime. And as in the original cartoon, he has this Arthurian, basso profundo, heroic quality to him. And even though I dislike Optimus Prime, there is a wonderful fanboy moment when Optimus first drives up to, to Sam and, and the, uh, I can't even remember her name, the obligatory girl character, the obligatory love interest or whatever, who's played by Megan Fox. Um, in his truck mode and transforms for the first time. And it's, it's, it is a, a pant-wettingly squealing fanboy moment. It's wonderful. As for the movie's faults, it's way too long. Like all summer blockbusters, it is way, way, way too long. It could have easily had an hour shorn off it. Um, there are characters that appear and disappear and their plots just aren't carried through. Um... The the narrative incoherency sometimes gets a bit grating. I mean, there's a lot of crap in it that you don't need. Redundant stuff like the um, the plot point about the coordinates for the All Spark being imprinted onto Sam Witwicky's great grandfather's glasses. That's just stupid and irrelevant. Uh, the the All Spark itself that is quite an uh, an incommunicable concept, and they don't really bother to try and explain what it is, it's just there, and it's it's the MacGuffin. It's the big MacGuffin, it's the big plot device that drives everything forward. And it's unashamed in that, it doesn't even bother trying to justify what the Allspark is, or where it comes from, or anything like that. It's just there, it's all powerful, the bad guys want it, the good guys want it, that's the, that's the basis for the, uh, the plot. I'd also say that it ends. I wasn't too. I wasn't that happy about the ending. I didn't like the way Megatron is finally taken down. 
Um, I would have preferred... I hope it's something that comes up in the next movie, the up-and-coming one. I want to see a proper fight between Optimus and Megatron. A proper one. One thing I would say is I do like the way the Decepticons are presented in uh, the movie because they are quite powerful. They, they are obviously much more powerful than the Autobots, which makes perfect sense. They are, after all, military-based entities, whereas the Autobots are technically not. And it seems to take a lot to take them down. I mean, Megatron himself is, is awesomely powerful. And it's just a sort of cop-out. The way he's, uh, he's defeated at the end of the movie is a bit of a cop-out. Well, now, on the whole, I was massively surprised by Transformers because it's so much fun. There is nothing, nothing, nothing meaningful or profound in it whatsoever. It is just a wonderful, wonderful way of wasting time. 